now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. Summer to winter in 24 hours. We have team coverage on this Denver 7 weather action day. As a strong spring storm moves into the state, we could see up to a foot here across the metro area. Look at some of those totals coming up. I'm Denver 7's Jessica Crawford, live from the foothills of Genesee, one of the first places in our area to see snow this morning. I'll give you a look at what's in store. This storm comes as we're starting to see more greens in our gardens. I'm Denver 7's Veronica Acosta, what you can do to protect your plants. And from outdoor concerts to school graduations, this winter blast means a big change of plans. A look at which events are still happening and which ones are scrambling for a backup plan. Oh man, as we take a live look at Red Rocks Amphitheater this morning, what a difference a day makes here. There's actually someone uh, running and training out there of on course, the steps. Of course, of yes, course there is it, in it Colorado. Is Colorado. <laughs> yes, but the snow is coming down pretty uh, heavy out there um and <laughs> look at him evergreen high school's graduation ceremony by the way is still on yeah. for 9 a.m out of yep. red rocks despite a lot of other events being canceled or postponed another thing you'll notice obviously with the snow is the temperature drop today yeah yesterday it was it was like summer almost 90 this morning we're in the 40s so we have team coverage on this Denver 7 weather action day. We want to get first to meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo, of course, tracking the timing of the storm. It's going to be memorable there for those evergreen kids, don't you think? Nicole and I both graduated from uh, Red Rocks. It didn't look like that uh, way back in the day. Take a look at satellite and radar. I want to show you where, yes, some of that rain has been switching over to snow north of Fort Collins, closer to uh, the Colorado-Wyoming border up into Cheyenne. We've got some good snowfall. Northern and Central Mountains, so portions of Larimer down and through Boulder, even Jefferson counties right now starting to see some of that snow. In Denver, it's mainly been quite a bit of cloud cover. We had a little mist early this morning. Roads are going to be wet as you get farther west up a little closer to Red Rocks and Evergreen. Seeing some of that snow coming down, obviously, as we speak. And statewide, this is really going to be northern and central mountains where that focal point of heavy snowfalls more than a foot possible by midday tomorrow. You're right. Temperature is a huge uh, concern too as they drop down to near freezing later today. We're right now at about 38 to near 40 degrees. It's going to get colder as the day goes on. So before you leave for work today, I'd cover up or bring in those plants because by the time you get home, we could already be seeing snow here in town and temps down to about 34 near 35 degrees. We're just going to be hovering right around that 40 degree mark through early afternoon and then those temps will tank overnight tonight upper 20. So we do have freeze warnings, winter storm warnings, you name it, Jason. I'm going to detail all of that and our new snowfall totals coming up. I was just looking at a camera there at C470 in Morrison. Yes, yeah, snow in there too and we have wet roads in most areas. All right, well this is up just south of the Colorado uh, Wyoming state line and it is really snowing for us up that way. I'll show you that in just a second too. This is up in Boulder, I-25 104th wet roads for us up on uh, Highway 85 near E470. Also wet roads in and out of Brighton. Take a look at the other quad split where you can see the road conditions whether it's down in Castle Rock starting to see some wet conditions there 225 in Parker. This is going to be C470 in University and this is I-70 between Federal and Pecos and uh, getting on over to Sheridan. So you have wet roads in most areas. Let me show you these pictures that are coming in from I-80 uh, between Larimer and, and uh, Cheyenne. That is full on snow up there and they have parts of I-80 even closed down and restricted. Even 287 is restricted up that way trying to go from Colorado and Fort Collins up into Laramie. You can see the drive times are actually on the high side or the drive uh, the drive times are on the low side with the speeds on the high side right now so it's really not too bad with a lot of folks just dealing with the wet conditions it's going to get really nasty for us i think tonight and into the overnight hours here along i-70 that's where jessica crawford's hanging out right now checking out some of the snow that's already hitting you in the face at times there jessica Yes, just right here, full on. The good thing is that it has let up just a little bit. Some of the top things people are going to want to watch out for as you're making your way out to work this morning. Number one, that fog. There is still quite a bit of fog, even though um, it is starting to get a little bit brighter outside. Number two is going to be those slick roadways, and that's coming from this rain and this combination of snow right now. We're really not seeing much snow accumulation, but we are seeing snow. And also the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to look out for is that massive drop in temperatures. It already got so much colder from just the time that it took for us to come from Denver to Genesee. So I'm gonna give you a look right now, just out here on I-70. Um, the roads really are slick. Jason was touching on that earlier, uh, but we really don't see people slowing down too much at this point. Just keep in mind, 
that it is you against the weather right now. And uh, also another thing, be prepared. Be prepared for that uh, rain that you're seeing to turn into snow because that's what we're seeing up here in Genesee. Live from Genesee, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. All right, Jessica, she didn't get enough snow this year. I think that's why we got this late, <laughs> late May storm since she just moved here. If you have plans to head to the high country this weekend, be on alert for avalanches. The Avalanche Information Center says the risk in the northern mountains will rise to considerable on Saturday. That's the third highest threat level. It means dangerous conditions uh, in the central mountains. The avalanche threat will rise to moderate, meaning heightened conditions. The threat in the southern mountains will stay low. Well, typically in Colorado, of course, we'd say it's safe to plant after Mother's Day. Of course, that hasn't turned out to be the case this year. My house, I know all of my neighbors over the last couple weeks preparing our gardens. They're now in jeopardy. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta continues our weather action day coverage with what we can do to protect our plants during this storm. So here's the good news. If you didn't do this last night, if you didn't cover up those plants in your front yard, your backyard, whatever it may be, in your gardens, you can still do it this morning. You have some time. Put that rain jacket on, put those shoes on, and get outside as quick as you can. We spoke to an expert who told us she has two big pieces of advice. Cover up and protect what you love most, and of course, what costs most as well. Listen to what she says you can do quickly to get those plants as protected as possible. If you have planted your tomatoes, your eggplant, bell peppers, those kinds of things are really sensitive to the frost, and you will have to cover them and protect them in some way. Perennials are a lot tougher. Their root system is underground, so you might lose some above ground flowers. So Luann, who you just heard from there, she works with Tagawa Gardens. She says when there's a big temperature drop like the one we're feeling this morning, overprotecting always better than underprotecting. Of course, take a look at her recommendations when it comes to covering those plants. If you have plants in pots, she recommends using, using some sort of small wooden stake a frost cover of some sort and then a plastic over that frost cover. If you have smaller flowers in that ground, a plastic bucket with a rock on top, even a pot itself covering the flowers will do the job. And then when it comes to protecting your trees from potential snow, we're going to get later on today. Here's what she does. She takes a broom and then she knocks some of that snow off first from those bottom branches and then she slowly makes her way toward the top of the tree. Listen to why Luann says covering techniques are so important. Whenever we're trying to cover something, we don't want to just cover it with something small to protect it from the snow, even though snow can be an issue. You want to create a little bubble, capture that warmth from the ground, and let that help warm this bubble that we're trying to create around your more tender plants. And because of the big temperature drop, it was a really busy week over at Tagawa Gardens. You probably saw that white frost cover that Luann was using. Those were flying off the shelves yesterday and really all week. She says if you're interested in getting one of those either from Tagawa Gardens or maybe another garden store around town, she recommends you give them a call first, make sure they're still in stock and then go about doing that. She says one of the other things that you can always do is look around your house for things that you might be able to use to actually go ahead and protect your plants as well. We're in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Veronica. A little bit of a silver lining here if things go south for your plants. If you have already planted, look for your receipt uh, because most plants will bounce back. If yours doesn't, you might be able to get a refund or a replacement. Home Depot has a one-year guarantee on its perennials, trees, and shrubs. They also have a guarantee on their Bonnie plants with miracle Grow soil or plant food. And Lowe's has a one-year guarantee for its trees, shrubs, and perennials. All other plants fall under the Lowe's 90-day return policy, but you do need your receipt. Snow teams are also fully deployed at DIA and we checked flight aware. Uh, the airport is busy this morning and also about 186 flights are canceled and 16 flights are delayed. Well, unfortunately, the snow and rain that we're seeing will not help crews battling several wildfires across the state right now. The Sims fire is burning near Montrose in western Colorado. It is 370 acres. Evacuation orders are in effect there. The Plum Tall Fire north of Pagosa Springs is over 700 acres now, and there is no containment yet on that one. The San Juan National Forest is under a stage one fire restriction. The High Park Fire near Cripple Creek is now 87% contained, and the wildfire that sparked along the entrance to the Great Sand Dunes National Park is fully contained. We are helping you stay ahead of the storm, though. Download the Denver 7 Plus app to your streaming device 
for a 24-7 weather stream to check the forecast whenever you need it. Well, it was such a strong start it to the was. series. They haven't lost a single game. Um, maybe the pressure got to the Avs That's here. A, yeah, yeah. Maybe we just needed to get this one out of the way. Yeah. Uh, this one stung a little bit. The Avs fell behind midway through game two against the St. Louis Blues and just couldn't recover. They lost hmm. four to one, so now the series is even at a game apiece. We didn't have our jump tonight. Um, our uh, execution was off. Um, yeah, just uh, we're feeling it, just fighting it out there. And uh, it's unfortunate, but it's 1-1. Uh, you know, we get to go on the road and hopefully steal one there, hopefully two. And, uh, you know, we got to forget about it and move on and, and get back to the way we can play. Yeah, they're going to bounce back. Next two games are in St. Louis. The first is Saturday, and then they'll play again on Monday. Lisa. This just makes it so that they can win the series here at home, right? That's a silver lining. Yeah. It's a Denver 7 weather action day. A few showers early this morning. We're at about 40 degrees, upper 30s, near 40 at the bus stop early on. It was t-shirt and shorts weather for your kids yesterday. They're going to want a jacket today, a heavy sweatshirt. Wet and chilly by the time they get back home today. We're going to see wet roads, rain switching to snow. It's going to get heavy in spots tonight. I'll take you through all of it hour by hour coming up. And right now we do have some very wet conditions anywhere you want to go here this morning, including here at Hamden and I-25. And another issue, the traffic lights are flashing red, so they're not working right here. And this is the folks, these are the folks that are heading west on Hamden right at I-25. So we'll have to treat this as a three-way stop, make our way through Hamden right at I-25. More people are using adjustable rate mortgages to get into a home. The pros and cons to consider before signing hmm. the dotted line. Plus, one of the last ski resorts open in Colorado is looking forward to some fresh powder this weekend, but the storm likely won't mean a longer season for a basin. And living out is nine lives to the fullest. We've seen plenty of dogs in the snow, but this Colorado cat is down for any adventure.